Hello, I'm Nastasia Bakoyani and it's with great pleasure that I welcome Lorna Hardwick to Classics Confidential. Welcome Lorna. Thank you for asking me, it's great to be here. Um, so Lorna, one of um, your abiding research interests has been classical reception uh, and you've done, have written a number of books, articles and edited collections on this topic. Uh, but, going back in time, uh, what first attracted you to this uh, subject? I think I got into it by accident, really. Um, it's something I'd always been interested in. I mean, my uh, original training was as an ancient historian. But, as an undergraduate, um, I actually read in the School of European Studies, which meant that there was a lot of cross-disciplinary and a number of people who attended classical seminars were actually reading history or, or literature or philosophy. And I was aware from that very early stage that they were looking at the classical text through a different lens. So it was a happy accident then. It was a, it was a happy accident. But I think the real trigger came in the 1990s. And there were two things that happened then. Um, one was that there was an explosion of interest in Greek drama on the London stage. I think at one point there were more productions of Euripides in one year than there, there were of any other author. So there was you know, a public interest in awareness and being a, a theatre girl, I was, I was interested in that. But the thing that really made me think about it um, were actually successive groups of students in the Open University and then subsequently elsewhere. Um, I was teaching a course on Homer at the time, and there was an option for students to develop some work of their own. And I was struck by the proportion who, without any prodding from me, um, were interested in how Homer had been used in subsequent poetry, for example, or were interested in how Homeric values had been translated into debates about the relationship between the individual and society. Mm -hmm and between um, martial and peace-like virtues. And I started then to think about the relationship between classical texts and what had been done with them. Um, so I think it, it really grew from then. Well, I mean, it's a classical reception and still a topic that attracts um, a lot of students. Um, but um, how has the um, discipline, if you like, changed over the years? Um, there's obviously been a lot of uh, development and now it's, it's much more of a booming uh, subfield of classics than it was before. I think that raises a lot of interesting points, um, partly about the history of classical scholarship, because in one sense I think classical reception under various mm. names you know, has, has, has always been there. Um, there's also, I think, an increased awareness of the relationship between um, classical scholarship and creative writing, acting, and so on. And that you know, came at the same time. There's been um, an increased awareness, perhaps, of the importance of translation studies of various kinds, um, both within classics as a discipline, um, but also in its relationship um, with other areas um, and, and, and in the world community. Um, I think also that Anglophone scholarship is quite good at seizing on things that have been done in various ways previously <laughs> and claiming to have reinvented them. And, you know, there was a strong German tradition in, in classical reception. Um, for example, there's always been um, you know, what used to be called classical tradition. Um, I suppose perhaps what distinguishes the more recent versions of, of classical reception scholarship is that there has been a, an increased awareness of reader response theory, spectator response theory, um, performance theory, um, and so on, which have perhaps made people think about mm -hmm. the lenses through which they're approaching um, the classical material. But it is, it is such a wide field and presents so many different possibilities that I would actually be quite cautious about saying, uh, you know, this is what the field is and this is what the methods are. Because uh, yeah, no, that's still It's exploratory and will continue to be so. And I think actually that is part of the rationale, that there is this continuing you know, re-examination, mm. re-reformulation, um, and really an almost open-ended um, debate. Which, which actually is, is part of Yeah, which of is, for me, is, 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 is actually the attraction. Is like, 
you know, the job of scholarship is to take the argument where it leads. Mm. I don't care if it <laughs> goes over what had been previously conceived as boundaries. Absolutely. And, I mean, the, the good thing as well, if you work in classical reception, is there's always more, um, always more. Uh, uh, new receptions coming Absolutely. out all the time. Absolutely. So we never run out of things. And I think, you know, continuing um, dialogue and debate mm. and learning from people who are working in other areas, not only within other areas mm. of classics, but also other subjects. You know, you have constantly to learn and I think anybody at whatever level who, who's not aware of that is actually not going to do very mm. good study or research yeah, in the field. Absolutely. Um, well looking towards the future, um, what do you think um, are the challenges that uh, classical reception is going to face uh, in the years to come? Okay. Um, I think the first challenge to start off you know, slightly parochially from within the areas that people are working on um, is a challenge that everybody faces when they, when they start doing a new piece of research in the field and that's how to relate uh, the detailed work, the case study mm. if you like, to larger questions. You know, we've all had the experience I think of, of looking at a, a study and thinking oh how interesting but where does it lead? You know, what's its significance? Why does it matter outside mm. its own terms? So I think that relationship mm. between the case study and the bigger questions one would want to frame, you know, is, is a constant mm. um, challenge. Um, the next thing, I suppose, being slightly less parochial, but still very much looking at it through classical mm. spectacles, is the question: What's classical about classical reception? I mean, you can sometimes see work, for example, that's done by modern historians mm. or, or literature specialists, which uses classical material, but within the context of their own inquiries. And then there are questions about how much that actually mm. um, suggests or tells you about the classical images or texts mm -hmm. or context. Um, and again, I think it, this is very much to do with the kinds of questions that one wants mm. to ask. And this is an area where I actually wish that more classicists who are not necessarily reception scholars would actually join in the debates mm. and help us to evaluate you know, what the relationship is between classical texts and images and contexts and ideas and the uses that are made of them mm. subsequently and how that affects you know, the methods that, that scholars would use. And again, I think there's no right or wrong answer no. to that. It would vary in different contexts. But having that um, debate, uh, exactly, is, is, that is an ongoing is essential. Thing. And that debate, I think, is essential for my third um, area that I would say um, is important, and that is the role that classical reception and through classical reception classics generally can play in wider debates which are outside the subject itself and even indeed outside academia. Mm -hmm. um, I sometimes think that, that classicists are, I don't know, maybe too protective <laughs> of their own purity <laughs> and are, are worried about um, you know, claiming mm. a, a wider degree of importance for classics. And of course it's right to be you know, modest and I'm not suggesting that there is an exceptionality classics that overruns everything else. But there are a lot of issues in which um, classical expertise, classical reception, research and questioning can make quite a big mm. contribution. I mean, for example, there's about to be a conference in Leeds which is looking at classicists and the First World War mm. and will doubtless look at the effect of um, World War I poets mm. and their use of, of classical material. And that will be partly a question of, of intertextuality mm. and po poetic tradition, but it will also be raise questions about the effect of those those big issues mm. about how people should behave, what is a good death, mm. what justifies killing, yes. that resonate far beyond what um, classical texts were concerned with in their own context, mm. but also overlap with other contexts. And I think that that balance of of overlap of concern of lived experience and yet the difference mm -hmm. in particular cultural and social values is really important and is, and is beneficial to people coming together mm -hmm. to discuss those things. Absolutely. Well, there's a lot of 
exciting work to, to be done. Um, thank you very much, Lorna, for um, speaking to us uh, on Classics Confidential. Thank you.